it is a bit cold and unpleasant <laughs> that early in the morning but nonetheless here we are today we are in Smolensk One of the things I like about Smolensk is that you don't have to go too far away in order to enjoy some little pieces of history. Just uh, so you have some estimation, behind me is the railway station and just turn around... The church! Behind me, the red one, is one of the three churches remaining in Smolensk which were built before the times of Horde or before the golden yolk and that building was built before them in 1140s if my memory serves me right so whatever remains remains from that time of course it was uh, rebuilt since um, Smolensk was a disputable territory uh, the church was first orthodox then it was catholic and back to Orthodox, uh, then it was partly destroyed in an attempt to seize uh, the city in uh, 1600s, which we've already mentioned briefly when I was telling you about Kaluga. Yes, like a whole staged occupation. Anyway, um, partly destroyed, then looted in uh, 1800s when Napoleon came to Russia and then there were communists, yeah, lots of story and then it wasn't working and now it is working again actually so there is lots of history in those walls and that's simply breathtaking in my opinion because we don't have that many pieces of history remaining nowadays it's always nice to learn more about your ancestors and your his history yes honestly we have lots of things to be ashamed of perhaps but it is overweighted by so many things we should be really really proud of nobody knows for how long the first settlement existed but according to the Russian, old Russian chronicles, the first contact was made at the end of the 9th century and actually it is counted as the time when Smolensk was founded. Yes, because in 2013 they celebrated their 1150th anniversary. Of course I know that compared to China it's like nothing but when you compare it to America for example it's nothing to scoff about let me tell you the city was built and then it was mentioned in some foreign chronicles particularly in the chronicles of the Byzantine Empire yeah or the Eastern Roman Empire if you are more accustomed to this name and now we are going to the city center to see the main tourist attractions of Smolensk and perhaps learn something more about its history so here we go of course as every border city Smolensk has walls it and previously it was a fort Town. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here is an example of what remains since then, since the first stone wall was built in the 12th century. Of course, it was destroyed and it was rebuilt, and it was it suffered greatly during the 17th century when. Smolensk tried to fight off the occupants, the intervention we call it. It was like from 1611 to 1613 and it is connected with the crisis of power I've already mentioned in Kaluga. The fact that there were like two false Dmitris 
and uh, a false pizza and many other false and not so false guys who wanted to seize the Russian throne for themselves but they couldn't and then the occupants who financially supported those people's claims came and they also couldn't because we do not like to be restrained yeah freedom fighters that's who we are the things I actually do for a good shootage you know climbing the walls but here we are it's one of the um, entrances if you can see just so you know now that we are inside the walls let's speak about history you see how, how far away it is yeah it used to be six and a half kilometers long that's not astonishing the most astonishing fact is that it was like uh, six meters wide. Basically, so you just understand how wide it is. We're like here and one, two, three, four, five, six. It's up to six meters wide, the wall. Now that's a scary thought, but quite useful during the siege, I would imagine. And that it successfully repelled numerous attacks from Polish and Lithuanian, Lithuanian, yeah, Lithuanian people. Uh, basically the white walkers. <laughs> and that's the wall. As you can see, it was built definitely at the end of the 16th beginning of the 17th century because the italian influence is quite pronounced now back to the game of thrones i briefly mentioned in kaluga this wall actually has a great importance in the history of smolensk and history of russia in general because it was built uh by the order of the last uh, legitimate russian tsar of rurikovich dynasty he was the son of Ivan the, Ter the Terrible, or Ivan the Fourth, as we call him. And it was primarily built in order to repel any outer attacks from Lithuanian and Polish armies. And actually, uh, the architect Fyodor Korn was uh, successful in his attempt. Those walls, they have seen a lot. They have seen Intervent. They have seen the French who tried to blow it up. They have seen German invaders. They have seen it all. And still they remain. But whatever wars cannot destroy, time and people usually can. What you see is but a small part of the ones great war, one of the biggest and toughest ones. Unfortunately, it was used up by locals in 1830s and in 1930s in order to expand and rebuild the city. Such is the history. At the times of ancient rules, long before the wall was built, long before the wars, the city was pretty important due to the fact that through it came the route from Varangians to the Greeks. Varangians is Scandinavia, obviously, and the Greeks are the Byzantines, of course. Actually, that's one of the main reasons why the city flourished and thrived and developed so fast at the beginning. And then, and then the wars became the struggles between Lithuania and Russia. At some time at the 12th century, Smolensk was its own princedom. Yes, and they were all happy and lucky. But then the Moscow princedom began rising, and then. The Tartars came and it took us almost three centuries to present 
a united front in order to throw the golden yoke just out of the country. When united front is presented, no one stands a chance, not even tough Tartar people. <laughs> and that is all, basically, the city center. Didn't take that long to get here, did it? Yeah. Smolensk is a perfect mixture of whatever remains from the 17th century and uh, buildings built during the communist reign in Russia. And of course, it's full of remembrance. Whether it is about people who died during the time of troubles, whether it is about people who died trying to protect Smolensk and Russia from Napoleon's army, all those people who suffered and died for their country during the Second World War.